Our next speaker has known Dr. Dan Wilson since they were in kindergarten together in Manson, Iowa. Perhaps she recognized greatness even then and will tell us about it. Or perhaps we'll learn how all this couldn't be a bigger shock to her. I don't know, really. <laughs> Regardless, would you please join me in welcoming Dr. Roe Rankin? Can you hear me? Okay, good. Uh, if you can't, please give me this signal because I'm told I have a soft voice. Well, that was a hard act to follow, this, what you just did, Jack. So I'm going to just give you my perspective of Dan. He's just Dan or Danny to me. And we've already seen some photos of Manson, but I'm going to try to paint a picture, a little broader picture. Let's go back to 1961, Manson, Iowa. Manson is a town of about 2,000 people. It is fueled by the farming economy around it, as well as it's a bedroom community for a small city about 20 miles away. And Manson is small town, very much small town. Six churches, a bank, two grocery stores, an elevator, corn elevator, grain elevator, of course, and two doctors, one of whom is Dr. Charles Wilson, Dan's father. And Dr. Wilson and his wife, Vi, have eight children. Dan is the seventh of eight children, and he's the fifth of five boys. Well, in 1961, Dan and I enter kindergarten together. However, I don't really get a chance to meet Dan at that time because I'm a farm girl and the farm kids went to school, went to kindergarten in the morning, were bused home at noon. The city kids, the town kids, then had kindergarten in the afternoon. But in the fall of 1962, Dan and I entered kindergarten together with Mrs. Behrens as our teacher. And that was the first of many classrooms that we shared together in primary and secondary education in Manson. Well, as I said, he's just Dan or Danny to me. And he was to everybody in our class, meaning that he was just one of the rest of us. There was a small group of us who liked to play whatever sport was in season at recess be it touch football or softball, or shoot some baskets or play dodgeball. And Dan was a good athlete. He was always picked to be on a team. And he did the same things we all did. I knew he was a bright guy, but I didn't always quite know that, because you're young. And I remember a couple things about Dan in elementary school, one of which is that uh, in 1964, we had a mock election in our classroom of about 25 students. And Dan and one of my other classmates were strong supporters of Barry Goldwater, while the rest of us were strong supporters of Lyndon Johnson. So that was a, my first inkling of Dan's political leanings at that time. <laughs> And as I said, Dan played games with all the rest of us. And as I said, softball, football. He actually suffered an injury, softball injury. I think he lost a tooth, isn't that it, Dan? So he, he got some scars through those playground activities. In, in junior high, it became apparent that, yeah, Dan was kind of setting himself apart from the rest of us a little bit, but he was still Dan or Danny to us. And I'm sure you, as you've heard by now, or have discovered on your own in interacting with him, Dan has a little bit of an impish nature. So in junior high, I'll give you an example. About, we had this cavernous study hall room that was about, hmm, maybe twice the size of this room. And there were probably 60 students in the room that one day. 
Also know that there was a library in the corner of our study hall. And this one particular day, I think Dan decided he was going to pay a library fine. So he went up to the desk there in the corner of the study hall and proceeded to pay his library fine by dropping coins. One coin at a time on the librarian's desk. I mean, there were pennies, so there were lots of them. And of course, everybody looks up at the time. And we were all in awe that Dan was doing this. If I remember correctly, Dan, that earned you a trip to the principal's office. I think. Yeah, that's what I thought, man. <laughs> and then in, in senior high, recognized that Manson High School had only about 300 students in the 9th through 12th grade. But in senior high, Dan again was, you could tell, he was beginning to separate himself intellectually from us, but he was still Dan and Danny. Uh, he played four years of football. He was four years on the track team, captain of the track team. He also was wrestling on the wrestling squad. He was in uh, speech and drama. He was the vice president of the student council in our senior year. And then there's one other club affiliation that I just, I had never heard of until I saw the annual. And this club affiliation had only four members that I can tell. The Sons of America and the Universe Philosophy Club. I was like, where'd that come from? I never did figure that one out, Danny. But Danny, after we graduated from high school, was able to expand his horizons. But let me go back a little bit more. In about the late freshman, I want to say early sophomore years, why Dan started hanging around this woman called Sandy Davis, a daughter of June and Jean Davis. And we could see that they were just hanging out with one another. I didn't even recognize that you guys started dating on Valentine's Day. That's pretty cool. Um, Sandy and I kind of became friends at that time, too. Recognized that in this small school of 300 students, there was this tradition for music in that about 42% of the student body was involved in choir, and about 38% of us were in band. Sandy loves music. And so she and I were parts of some musicals together, like Fiddler on the Roof, uh, West Side Story, just to name a couple. Sandy was on stage. I was in the orchestra. She was out singing and doing roles such as Grandmother Zeidel in Fiddler on the Roof. And I was in the back behind the curtain playing a French horn. But because of this friendship and growing friendship and love of music, I still remember an evening when Sandy invited me to a cool person's party. Got to remember, I'm a farm kid, so there was this cool person's party after the musical. And Sandy asked me to go along on that. And with that, I will always be grateful to her that she just brought this farm kid along on something that kind of opened up my social skills a little bit, let's put it that way. Uh, Sandy and Dan were hanging out, and definitely by the end of the sophomore year, they were a unit and have been ever since then. Well, you know much of the rest of the story. After high school, Dan went on to Yale, then came back to Iowa, go to the University of Iowa Med School, then on to McLean Hospital in Boston, Cambridge, Cincinnati, Omaha, Jacksonville. I was almost always able to go and visit them wherever they were. I didn't make it to England, unfortunately, but every other place I was able to keep in touch with them. And Dan and Sandy, I'm so tickled that you have this opportunity. 
I will really look forward to hearing your stories about how things go with you here. But I know they'll go really well. More importantly, I just want to thank you for your friendship and your love all these years. Good luck out here.